Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Kinexus training team office hours webinar, aka the Banner Rippy Show episode 20. What a milestone. Over 100 res registrants, our highest of the Banner Rippy Show. Super excited to be here. My name is Ryan Rippy, and I'm the Senior Customer Enablement Manager here at Kinexus. And I am finally joined by my partner in crime, Solutions Engineer Matt Banna. Welcome back. Banna. Oh, did you say you're senior? Did that mean you got old while I was gone? Or? Yeah, basically. Um, well, I am finally back. For the record, I missed both webinars for work-related travel. I'm sure you did. So, uh, it wasn't vacations. It was a little vacations. Uh, but big thanks to Rippy for handling the past two webinars on his own. I know the last one, he just likes to hear himself talk, so it took about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, for also not kicking me off the show. I appreciate that. You know, I got to tell you, Ben, I was really close to just renaming this The Ryan Show. In fact, I started holding auditions to replace you. I had Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Gosling, even brought out Ryan Philippi to come in and test out for the role. Uh, but then I realized we need to print new banners, and I didn't feel like doing that. Well, I'm just glad I can hold my own with these A-listers that you brought in to try and replace me. It's good to have you back, buddy. So for those of you new to our webinar series, welcome aboard. The way this works is we plan to nerd out for the next 30 minutes or so on a Kinexus topic that we will share with you all in just a bit. The purpose of these webinars is for us to review the hottest topics and latest and greatest features suggested by you, our customers. So before I go ahead and reveal our topic for today, let's just go over some housekeeping items. No drum oh, rolls, Banner. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm off tempo. It's go, been back, a while. go back to New Zealand. All right, so the webinar is being recorded. We'll go ahead and send out the slides and recording to everyone after the webinar. Also, if you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to type those into the chat box. We will do our best to answer those in real time, as well as at the very end of the webinar, if there is some time left over. I know as soon as I say this, what's gonna come. So, all right, let's take a look at our webinar topic for today. Oh, no drum roll. Oh, that, no, 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 you were doing well, you are doing so well. Earlier this week, we unveiled our latest 2.3.6 release featuring 87 improvements. Round of applause to our development team go. over there in Dallas. Great job, guys. Thanks, Dev, guys. So for today's webinar, we will be taking a deeper dive into some of the top new features included in that release. Uh, let's see what we have on the agenda for today, Banna. All right, Banna, I kept things simple. Um, I went ahead and said, like we're, we're gonna talk some, some item enhancements. We're gonna spend probably a majority of our time in lists and reports. So we'll go over all of the enhancements in those areas of the platform. Uh, we'll also get into a couple of, of board enhancements. Um, 87 tickets, as I mentioned, a lot going on here in our 2.3.6 release. So unfortunately, we won't be able to get through everything. Uh, but of course, we will leave you with uh, a sign off to check out the support page all around the release to uh, see everything that, that came out. So let me go ahead. I'm going to jump out of our slide deck. A lot to cover. And I'm going to start off with some item enhancements. Banna, I am super excited for this first enhancement, it's probably my favorite feature of the release is conditional fields. That's a big one. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit the create button and I'm going to select A3 here in the dropdown. So when filling out your template forms, you may have several text fields and or attribute fields that need to be populated. So specifically, the way that we've set up this create a three form is we have a attribute here at the bottom under additional information for verification required. So as I'm filling out this form, we can now configure with the conditional fields that by selecting a specific attribute value, we now have additional fields that now pop up for us to fill out. Okay. He's all wide-eyed right now. I'm, I'm super excited. This is awesome. So in terms of conditional fields, you have the ability to configure fields and or attributes. So here we see a couple of, of number fields in this case that show up uh, that you can go ahead and populate. And so if you're kind of thinking, you know, so, so why is this useful for my organization? To simplify your submission process or to only show specific information that needs to be filled out based on, you know, a specific value in this case that's chosen. Um, setting up these conditional fields is going to help 
show those relevant fields and or attributes for you during your workflow process. This is a super powerful, really cool feature. I'm glad we led with it. I'm glad that I stole it and got to talk about it. So that is conditional fields. Be sure to reach out to your customer experience lead to, uh, to take advantage of this and get that set up on your templates. Uh, all right, Ben, I'm moving on. Next thing I wanna talk about is the legal notice where we can have that be displayed now in the product. So Kinexus has the ability to add a legal notice when you are creating, editing, or just viewing your items in the system. This is a great place to include reminders about what information maybe that should not be stored in Kinexus, for example. Uh, the way that this worked previously is that if you were to set a legal notice on your templates, that legal notice would show up on all of your templates in the system. And so we said, well, you know, what if I have a specific workflow where, you know, the legal notice needs to be changed, or maybe I want to use the legal notice as, you know, some directions or, or something of, of the, along those lines. Now we have the ability to customize the legal notice per template so that you can choose to display different information for different workflows. And so if you're asking yourself, okay, well, where the heck does this show up? Here on this Create A3 form, you can see at the very bottom, thanks for attending the Banner Rippy Show. Nice, smooth there, Banner. You're welcome. So this would be an example of a legal notice that we have shown here on the Create screen. The same thing would show up on the Edit screen. And you can actually choose the same text or different text if you want to have that be displayed uh, on the item itself when you're viewing it. So just wanted to point that out. All right, let's jump out of our Create A3 window. Next thing I wanna talk about is we now have the ability to show the description, uh, not as a tooltip, but as a kind of text when you're using header fields. So what does that look like? I'm gonna come over to our part pres. Thank you, Banna. And I'm going to specifically scroll down here in this A3 to where it says additional information. So this is an example of what we call a header field in Kinexus. Header fields are used to kind of break up uh, your work panel into different sections, right? Now, you can when use you sound the create screen as well to kind of break those Yeah, down. you can do yeah. it on the create screen. We see it here on the, on the item itself. Uh, when you're using any sort of field, not, not even just uh, the header fields, but if it's a text field, if it's an attribute field, you can include tooltips, right? So if we hover over additional information, we can see a tooltip. Now, by having that tooltip show up here as a description in the text, you don't necessarily need to hover over. You can just go ahead and see that information directly underneath the header fields. So this is a great way to just provide further context, further direction. I love what you did here, Banna. See each drop-down selection below to add additional information. That lets me know I can come in here, update these fields, you know, utilize more tooltips on those as well. So just continuing to, to help with the adoption in the platform. Cool. All right, Banna, last thing that I want to talk about for items uh, is the new experience when you are downloading to an XLSX file format. Love so it. to download the details of an item in Kinexus, or, or a list of items as well, you can export those into an XLSX format. That's available here in the ellipses of the item. And then by going ahead and, and saving to XLSX here, we have a tool tip, which I'm gonna go ahead and, and talk about. Uh, you can work with your data in a spreadsheet tool like a Microsoft Excel, a Google Sheets, a Numbers, right? So previously, if you just went ahead and clicked this, it would just download all that data directly into that, that file format. Now there is going to be a window that's gonna pop up that's gonna ask you a question, okay? So this is asking me, how do I want to display the team members on, for example, this item in that Excel file. So the default way that we've always done those team members is shown here, username, full name. So if, if that's how you've always been exporting, no need to change anything, just hit save and you're good to go. But this is now giving you the ability to choose how those team member, team member names, excuse me, will appear in your Excel export. So we do have some options that you can choose from. You can go with strictly username, you can go with their full name, maybe their email, or if you're using employee IDs, you'll be able to select that as well. So this just gives you more customization when you are uh, doing these Excel exports 
Um, you can start to manipulate that data and put in those macros and everything you're using specifically with how you want to display those team member names. You get all that, Banna? I did, that was a lot. All right, man, let's, uh, let's jump out of our item enhancements and let's uh, let's talk some more about lists. There's a lot that we got here, right? I was a little worried you're just gonna keep going and I wasn't gonna talk <laughs> at all. So what we're looking at here in this My Improvements card is a list. Uh, a list offers a way to visualize the list of specific items as well as the details of those items in Kinexus. Now in our latest release, we put a lot of work into lists, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of that work right now. The first thing we've done is we've added a workflow icon to list view and we've added a template tooltip on Gantt, Tree, and List View. So if you look at the left, you'll see our title of our idea or our chart or whatever it may be, and then you'll see the little icon here. If you hover over that icon, it'll actually tell you what type of item it is. So we're looking at a chart here. This one is an improvement. This one is an A3. This one is a different type of an A3. So that just gives you a quick, easy way to see what type of item you're actually looking at in your list or your tree or your Gantt view. We've also added the make a parent field in a, col a parent column in a list tree or Gantt view linked to the actual parent. I know you're excited about this. I one. love this one. So <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand this view so we get to see some more of our options here. Um, using the parent field is a great way to be able to uh, jump into, into project trees from boards. I do a lot of work with parents and children and, and nested items. So now you'll see the parent. Um, you can actually click the link and it'll take you right to that parent. God, Before it. it would just take you to the actual item itself. Um, it's a lot more useful to, than just seeing the parent. Now we can click right into it. And this is great if you're, if you're using the list view instead of the tree view and want to be able to see that visualization, that hierarchy and, and directly jump in at the parent level, perfect column to go ahead and add in there. So the next feature is we're now allowing text areas and ad hoc fields in list tree and Gantt view You're in the column. You're joking. Yeah, no I'm not joking. Way. I am not joking. Now this is a huge new feature for this release. Previously only text fields or attributes and number fields could be put into that list or tree and Gantt view. And now you can put any field from a template into that list. So right here we have our descriptions from all of our templates. We even have a 5Y column down here that is an that. ad hoc field. Wow. So this just gives greater access, greater visibility into all your template info that you can put it in that, that list or that tree view. Ben, that is a huge feature. I'm glad you covered that. All right, what else we got going on in lists here? So the next thing, I'm just gonna kind of piggyback off of what we're looking at here, Banna. I noticed that you added a new workflow column. So workflow was always an option to be able to filter down by, but now we can include that workflow as a column option here. And remind me what workflows are again for our audience. So workflows, that's gonna- I know, that's gonna I know what it is. Yeah, I don't know, you've been in New Zealand for a little bit, so I might have to give you a crash course in Kinexus. I've been again. home for like two months, okay? So for, for workflows, when, when you log into Kinexus, there are four main workflows that you might have access to, which is going to be your projects, your improvements, your tasks, and your charts. Based on the improvement work that you're doing with your organization, you might title these something different. Um, in, in the case where we were hovering over, we saw that uh, for our improvements represented with the light bulb icon, we got those as improvements, but we also have an example of an improvement that we've titled A3V2. Uh, so that's where we can start to fit some of your organization's language and you can be familiar with how the Kinexus language works as well. It's a great overview. Thanks. That's why you're, that's why you're seeing here. <laughs> so in addition to the workflow, we've also added, I was super excited about this, Vanna. In our last release, we added the ability to filter down by a chart type. And I was like, wait, I want that as a column option I also. See, I want to see what kind of charts I have in my yeah, list. Yeah, if I'm looking at a list of all of my charts and want to see what type of chart that is in, a, in this list view here, boom, there it is. You can see if it's a threshold chart, bar line, bowling, Pareto. So now we have that chart type column that'll show up uh, as an option as well. Vanna, we've been, I, I keep saying column, column, column. If you remember the column picker when we were working in lists was was not the easiest thing to, no, to work say, through. Yeah, you got that big list and it would have a list oh, of man. every single field and attribute and locate everything in Kinex. And imagine what that would have looked like to today's world yeah. with text areas and ad hoc fields available as too well. Too much, too much. Don't worry, we fixed that for you and we think you're really gonna love this. So when you are looking to add additional columns here, 
If you go ahead and click the little drop down, you'll see the option now to edit columns. So this is what Bannon was referring to, where there would just be an endless list Before of Before it would of populate options. a list that would take up your entire screen. And it would be very difficult to search for what you were looking for. So what we've done is we've actually unified the experience for lists uh, compared to an item list card on a board. So now what you'll do is you'll come in and you'll click edit columns. And here is where I can come in and search for those specific columns. I have these headers here that can help guide me if I know I'm looking for a team role, for example. So I can search through here. I can type in if I know exactly what I'm looking for. I'll be able to select that option. And then I have the ability to drag and drop these as well. So I can see what that column uh, is going to be. It's be the, the same columns. experience, whether you're editing it for the short term or for a more permanent change. Exactly. Thank you, Banna. So I'm also really excited about, this is probably my second favorite feature in the release, so I'm, I'm two for two right now. Um, and, and then Banna, you went ahead and spoiled the fact that if I go ahead and switch this over to, spoiler, Gantt view, let's go ahead and check out the Gantt. Now when working with your Gantt view in Kinexus, you have the ability to include all of those columns as well. And so if we come over here, thank you Banna, you'll see that it used to just be your title and you'd have your status. Now we have responsible, we have due date, last updated. We can come in here additionally and add in all of those columns to Gantt view as well. And you can fluctuate between uh, what you see in that expanded view versus your collapse view. Big feature requests from our customers, excited to say that Gantt view has the same options for columns now as our list. Big things. Tree Big things. Big things happening at Kinexus. All right, Banna, back to you. So now we're going to switch gears a little bit. And we're going to talk about some board enhancements. Um, we're actually looking at a board right now. A board is just a collection of cards that show information relevant to the logged in user. So I'm going to jump over to my team results board and we're going to talk about some new widgets. What are you, a frog? <laughs> You use the same joke from a release video? I liked it. I, you, you wrote I a wrote good joke. It. You, I know you, you did write a good it. joke. So previously, we only had two different widgets that you could access. Now we've added three more. We've added an item count, a financial impact, and a time savings widget. So this is an easier way to view metrics and access a list of items. Right here, I have a list of our overdue items. Here I have just a numerical value of our financial impact and then another numerical value of our time savings. Before you could only see those on reports, you'd have to look at the entire report to kind of get a, a big view of all that. Now you can look at it just with this widget right here. I love that, Vanna. Take us behind the scenes of setting up one of these widget cards. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna edit this widget card right here. The same experience as before, you add your number of rows, your number of columns, you add your widget. So I'm gonna edit this one that we've already built. If you click the type before we had that chart goal and that create button, now we have three new ones, item count, financial impact, and time savings. You'll use the filter just like you use any other filter. Right now, I'm just showing the status of any kind of overdue item. Of course, you just hit that plus button, go down your list, figure out what you're trying to filter for, and create that list. It'll show you that number of however many items fit that criteria. Love it. Right I mean, below that, oh, were you just gonna No, ask? I was just gonna yeah. say, what's that apply view permissions mean? So apply view permissions will mean that your number or your impacts might differ based on the permissions that you have. Got it. Because um, one user might have uh, permissions to see different items than another. Uh, so if you see a different item than, than your coworker, if you see a different number than your coworker, your deskmate, your neighbor, whatever it is, make sure you check your view permissions and figure out um, that you may be able to see different things. Got it. Perfect. What else we got in boards, Banna? So next, when we said refresh a board before, if you went down to our refresh board option, um, it didn't really refresh the board. All it did was refresh the cards, the, the on, cards the on the board. Um, so what we've done is we've renamed that one. We've called it refresh cards. So now we say refresh cards and it, it does the same thing as before. It just refreshes the date in the cards. Um, but then we've also added a reload board option. So that will reload your entire board Anytime that anybody's editing a board separate from you, if you want to see those updated changes, if we move some cards around, if we add some more, hit that reload board and it'll reload it from the top and you'll see all that new stuff. And the last thing we have is a, is a last updated date um, and a last updated by on the board edit window. So if you look at your edit board and you go all the way to the bottom, 
you'll be able to see who updated that board and when. So if somebody makes some changes, now you can go talk to them and ask why they made those changes. And this, just so everyone is aware, this is specific to this window. So if somebody goes in and makes any changes to the cards on the board, that's not gonna be reflected here. This would be if I came in and changed this from two sections to five sections, that's gonna go ahead and update that last updated with me and the time that I did that at. That was, it was us today. Oh, it looks like you were prepping for that webinar <laughs> pretty last minute. I, hey. <laughs> So for those of you who have access to reports, reports help you measure the health of your improvement culture. So one of the first small changes that we made in here is we helped identify what location you might be looking at in the report section. So if I came in here, for example, and wanted to drill down, I'm looking just at customer experience and then, you know what, I wanna go ahead and collapse this location filter over here so that I can get a little bit more real estate on, uh, on my screen. Now, once I've done that, you'll see that the location of customer experience, I can see that that's been chosen. And so that'll update, of course, if I have multiple locations chosen as well. I'm gonna jump into, let's make sure we get out of just customer experience, get some more data in here. Let's jump over to, let's take a look at the impact summary, Vanna. So you're gonna notice when working with your reports, um, the experience in the top right is now going to show range, it's gonna show a time interval, and it's gonna show a reference date. So the first thing I wanna talk about is gonna be that reference date. So the reference date is simply referring to the reference date that is displayed on the report. So you'll have the options here to choose between create, start, do, and complete. This allows uh, or provides more details in reports. Actually, let me go to the impact over time. I like using this one a little bit better. So in this case, if I wanted to say, hey, actually just show me the items that are due, if I go ahead now and click into this June 2019 bar, that means that all of these items completed here are, were actually due in June, for example. Now the time interval, this is something that's brand new. We didn't have this before. What we would do is when you would go to your reports, we would choose kind of the best time interval based on the data you were looking at. Now we can give you a time interval that you can show in your report so that you can drill down into your data over those various time intervals. So you'll see the options for, this could be day, week, month, and the new ones that we've given you the ability to drill down by are quarter based on the calendar year, as well as year based on the calendar year. <laughs> <laughs> so quarter, for example, if I wanna look through, you know, first quarter, which would be January, February, March, you get the idea, right, Banna? All right. Were there more? <laughs> Uh, the other thing I want to talk about is going to be, now I'm going to come back to that impact summary. Let's do, let's base this off of our start date. That's fine. So the next thing I want to talk about is we've now added items to impact reports that are not in a complete status. So what does that mean? When, when you're working with an impact report, for example, here's our impact summary. Whenever you are capturing any impact during that resolution process in Kinexus, that data is gonna be displayed in the reports so long as that item then is completed in the system, right? What we understand is that sometimes you might go in and simply save that impact. You're still working on the item, but you wanna be able to see that impact in your report section. So now you can, right? We now have the ability to add items to impact reports even if they're not yet completed, so that it can help increase the accuracy of your impact reports by including items that may still be in progress. So you'll notice here on the impact summary, let me expand this for everyone. There's a little checkbox over here that says only complete. So this is the default view, right? When you come into a report, this is how it's always worked. If you now deselect this, what it's gonna do, you might've saw some of the changes in the numbers. Now this is gonna include items that have some sort of resolution saved, but they might be in a different status, yep. whether that's you know new, active, planned, overdue. Something resolution that you're submitted. currently working on, you already have an impact for, but you're not finished with that project yet. So you added that impact, and previously it would not have been counted in this list, but now it will be. Exactly, perfect. Ben, I, I think we have a few other reports features that we want to show up. Do you want to jump yeah, back in here? Yep. Yeah, so we've actually added a number of financial impact columns to our impact reports. So if we look at our financial impact here with our time savings um, and all the other columns, and we hover over here, 
you can get every single type of, of impact that you'd ever want to see. Holy moly, that's a lot of column options. So your actual, your forecast, your target, if you're looking at one time, recurring, and you can do those for every single type of quantitative impact. Fantastic. You can really drill down on the reports, huh? Yeah, absolutely. Um, spoiler, isn't there a... Isn't there a, a way to save those for next time? Uh, well, you know, we're looking down the line in our product roadmap. If you want to make this sticky, be able to customize the columns that you see. Uh, I think that's something kind of will look to implement sooner rather than later. Well, as long as you guys don't tell anybody, we won't tell anybody. <laughs> I already know. Uh, we've also added the ability to put all of the impact leaderboard reports into graph mode. So graph mode is something that we've been adding to a lot of our reports. We're continuing it with this release. Um, so now you have that that graph mode and you can you can do the same thing yeah um, so you can do that now for those impact leaderboards i think uh, the attributes as well you want to go ahead and show yep, that one ben? yeah so we can we can also show that with our attribute report and that graph mode is there and we can sort and click our attributes and, and see it in this mode instead of just the the list mode great visualization of course both of those views are available when you're going ahead and adding these reports to report cards on a board as well yes and lastly we've shortened up our tooltips reports with links to our respective support docs so if you ever hovered over that that tooltip there icon it was probably like three paragraphs and told you everything about the report now we're just going to give you a brief summary and then if you want to learn more, you can click that learn more button. It'll take you to our support site and give you everything you want to know about that specific report. Ben and I could probably spend an entire webinar talking about reports. And we probably will. We probably <laughs> will down the line. So if you want to get a deeper dive into those reports that we talked about today, see some of the new features, how these reports work in the system, definitely be sure to check out our support site. And those links will take you directly to the respective reports. So now real quick, we did a couple other things regarding our financial impact. So we're talking about impact reports. I'm going to jump over to a project dashboard to show off a couple of those things. So one of the things that we've done here is we've actually added the ability to filter by the value of a financial impact type. So previously, if we jump in and we, we go to our resolution section with our impact, we could filter for a certain type of impact. So if you wanted to see anything with a, a cost avoidance or a quality improvement impact or a revenue generation impact, we could look at those and it would show you that entire list of items. What we've done now is we've given you the, the ability to put in a numerical value for a minimum of maybe $500 per impact, or I wanna see everything with less than $1,000 per impact. And then you could say your, your start date, your end date, some kind of type of your actual or your forecast, whatever those may be, give you a more granular way to filter for those impacted ideas. That's amazing. I mean, I, I can essentially come in here and filter based on like a threshold. Show me any cost savings that were, um, you know, a, a minimum of, of $200 or something like that. And yeah. now it's going to be a list of all yep. those items. That's fantastic. Maybe use your finance team to, to say, hey, finance team, here's a list of all of our improvements that had an impact of greater than $10,000, you guys should definitely take a look and verify that impact. And the other thing that we've done is we've added the ability to aggregate impact totals for all the statuses in a, in a list or a tree view. So right now, if we're looking at this list, we have a Kaizen event here with our financial impacts for all of our improvements and tasks and projects beneath that. And it's just showing each on an individual level. So there's no writing materials that has an impact of $18,000 and this part press, man, that's a big one, 182,000 and our Kaizen event itself by its own, just an impact of 27. And so what, so what I'm noticing here, Ben, is I see part press, I see that financial impact, I see that the improvement is rolling up to the project level, but it's not currently including what's on part press because it's not complete yet. That's correct. And so it. now we actually have the ability to show you how um, to do that. So if you head into the edit board, and you can to our view options here and you hit this check mark in financial columns include children of any status and you hit save it'll now aggregate it all is. of those to that top level project so this is pretty similar to what i showed in the in the impact summary with the only complete just now being able to report on impact for items that are not in a complete status yes you that's can do absolutely that in the report right section list section i love it ben i don't think that any questions have come through and it looks like we're at time so uh, pl please feel free to, to put those questions in right now Van is going to go ahead and take us out though guys thank you so much for the time honestly I'm really glad to be back I always have a ton of fun doing these I feel like this went okay group. yeah we did all right um, and we hope these webinars are valuable and we certainly appreciate your feedback so please um, drop us a line on, on Twitter on LinkedIn 
um, send us an email, whatever it may be. We appreciate your feedback. Be sure to sign up for the next Banner Rippy Show, which will be hosting August 29th, and will feature our Milestones add-on module. We've added a bunch of new features to Milestones over the past couple releases, so we're very excited to show them off. Um, check out all of our webinars from last year and this year, both years. Um, head over to kinexus.com slash webinars slash office hours. Um, if you haven't already done so, register now for KineXCon 2019, hosted here in beautiful Austin, Texas. Continuous music, drinks, food, and improvement. I see what you did there. You like that? Um, you'd be Kai Razy. Yeah, <laughs> you got it. To miss out on this spectacular event. Um, Rip and I will both be there with bells on. Don't worry, we're not actually going to be wearing any bells. Uh, but autographs will be available. Please, no flash photography. I'm just kidding. Pictures. We can definitely take pictures. If you have any questions or need assistance with configuration of the features that you saw here today, please reach out to your Kinexus customer experience lead. Um, in the meantime, we encourage you to check out our support page at support.kinexus.com. Whew! Is that all of it? I think we hit it I, I all. I think you got through everything there. Good job, Ben. No questions have come through. If you do have any questions, if you need assistance with the configuration you saw here today, I, I think you mentioned this, Ben, but definitely reach out to your CE leads. Uh, we'd be happy to help set up your conditional fields and everything else that we went through today, plus what we didn't get through today as well. So. Awesome. Well, I'm Matt Banna. He's Ryan Rippey. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you kind next time.